U.S. President Joe Biden has said the U.S. is joining with our European allies to find and seize the yachts and other assets of wealthy Russians linked to Vladimir Putin and his government. Here's what that means. The U.S. Justice Department is launching a special unit to enforce sanctions against Russian government officials and oligarchs targeting their yachts and other assets. The U.S. has already joined the European Union and other allies in targeting Russian elites and their family members with sanctions including freezing assets. Now, as Rolling Stone reports, Alisher Yuzmanov's yacht was seized by German authorities Wednesday. It is launching its Klepto Capture Task Force to enforce its sanctions. Anger against those seen as playing a part in the Russian invasion of Ukraine has been widespread even outside of state actors, with a Ukrainian sailor arrested Saturday in Spain after admitting to trying to sink a yacht owned by the head of a Russian state arms firm, stating it was retaliation for the invasion. Responding to the change in mood, at least five super yachts owned by Russian billionaires were in the Maldives on Wednesday, which does not have an extradition treaty with the U.S., according to Reuters. The basis for the state-based economic sanctions aimed at oligarchs and their families is, according to CNN, that they can unsettle a very personal element of the Russian economy, in which Vladimir Putin's so-called inner circle and the family members tied to them represent an extraordinary consolidation of wealth and power inside the country. As Russia's invasion of Ukraine enters its second week, the Washington Post explains that many of Russia's billionaires have served high up in Putin's government or been instrumental in providing financing either for the Russian president personally or his government government's efforts abroad, according to EU officials. This position sees them control roughly 30% of the nation's wealth, compared with roughly 15% in Germany and the United States, and this wealth is vulnerable to sanctions, because much of it is kept outside of Russia. The country's billionaires have about as much financial wealth stored in offshore foreign accounts as the entire Russian population has in Russia itself, according to a 2017 paper released by the National Bureau of Economic Research cited by The Post. The idea behind tracking down their yachts is that this is not simply an attack on rich Russian individuals with no direct link to politics, power, or Putin. This makes it quite distinct from reports of, say, the Glasgow Film Festival throwing out two Russian films from its program because they had received Russian state funding via the CF Cinema Fund, according to The Hollywood Reporter. These billionaires are at the heart of, and the beneficiaries of, the system of power that allows Putin to continue to govern and, by extension, invade Ukraine. Summing up the U.S.'s position and the proposed work of the new Klepto Capture Task Force, President Joe Biden, in his State of the Union speech on Tuesday, said, To the Russian oligarchs and corrupt leaders who have built billions of dollars off this violent regime, no more. Quite why it was ever acceptable in the first place for most of this money to pour through U.S. institutions is a more awkward question that the U.S. and many of its allies will also have to ask themselves. After invading Ukraine, Russian President Vladimir Putin has escalated the situation further by ordering the transfer of deterrence forces to a special mode of combat duty, thus raising the specter of nuclear war. While the ambiguous order could simply be a threat to the U.S., one strategic alternative is that it could mean Russia is dispersing intercontinental ballistic missiles from their bases and fitting them to long-range heavy bombers, according to one senior fellow at international affairs think tank, the Carnegie Endowment, cited by the Financial Times. The order could also involve moving tactical warheads from centralized storage facilities to deployment locations as a threat to Ukraine. However, alternatively, Pavel Podvig, a senior research scientist at the UN Institute for Disarmament Research in Geneva, suggested on Twitter it could mean that the Russian nuclear command and control system received what is known as a preliminary command, which essentially means connecting the wires of the system so that if a launch order was issued, it would go through. In peacetime, the system is there, but the circuitry is disconnected, Podvig explained. Even if you press the button, nothing would happen. However, if Russia believes it entered a threatening period, the National Command Authority can bring the system into a working condition, connecting the wires. Podvig added that the preliminary command could also trigger visible actions such as submarines leaving ports or weapons loaded on bombers and bomber dispersals, but this is not necessarily the case. Everything could stay on the level of circuits. Importantly, he concluded by saying that the order is not something that suggests Russia is preparing itself to strike first, adding that, in his view, a first strike has never been an option. In the midst of a propaganda battle fought by both sides, a Ukrainian government official has said that a hit squad sent to kill the Ukrainian president has itself been eliminated. Here are the details. 
As fighting continues as part of the Russian invasion of Ukraine, some of the men sent to assassinate Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, an elite unit of Chechen soldiers, have themselves been eliminated. According to Ukraine's Secretary of the National Security and Defense Council, cited by Ukrainian news outlet The New Voice of Ukraine. Speaking to Ukraine's Rada TV channel, Oleksiy Danilov said the Chechens had split into two groups, with one handled near Hostomel, a town near Kyiv, and the other in our sights. Seemingly corroborating part of the statement, the Kyiv Independent reported that Ukrainian forces had successfully destroyed a Chechen Special Forces column of tanks near Hostomel on Saturday, February 26th. In a separate development, the Times of London reported last week that more than 400 Russian mercenaries are operating in Kyiv with orders to assassinate President Zelensky. The Wagner Group, a private Russian militia, flew in mercenaries from Africa five weeks ago on a mission to decapitate Zelensky's government. Those reports and the state of Zelensky, who reportedly turned down a CIA offer to leave Ukraine before the invasion began, demarcate just one element of the ongoing battle for the country. Elsewhere, the Wall Street Journal reports the Ukrainian Air Force is crediting its new Turkish-made drones with destroying large numbers of Russian weapon systems with guided bombs. The chief commander of Ukraine's armed forces, Valery Zaluzny, posted a video of such a drone strike on Russian trucks. The video's text said the Bayraktar drone struck a Russian convoy near the city of Malin, around 97 kilometers northwest of the Ukrainian capital, Kyiv. A few such videos show multiple bombs hitting Russian weapon systems in wooded areas and in convoys, with stuck convoys presenting the opportunity to target explosive-laden targets like a supply truck. Russian troops, though, have been deploying anti-aircraft missiles effectively against such drones. The Vienna-based International Atomic Energy Agency says it is closely monitoring developments at nuclear-related facilities in Ukraine after Russian forces captured the Chernobyl nuclear plant after a fierce battle with Ukrainian National Guards protecting the decommissioned site on Thursday, according to Al Jazeera. Infamously, reactor number 4 at Chernobyl exploded on April 26, 1986. The subsequent fire that demolished the reactor building released large amounts of radiation into the atmosphere. Citing the official website of the site's operator, Reuters explains that nuclear waste management and storage remain ongoing at the site, while new scientists reported a surge in fission reactions around the destroyed nuclear reactor in May last year. The situation now, according to nuclear scientists who spoke to new scientists both directly before the attack and after, is that the risk of nuclear material being released from the decaying reactor as a result of the conflict is low with one researcher who monitors the ongoing emission of neutrons from the reactor explaining that staff at Chernobyl were safe. The entrance of Chernobyl is controlled by Russians. They do not enter inside, he said. Bruno Merck at the University of Liverpool meanwhile concluded, I think as long as there is not a deliberate attack, the risk is comparably low. Though he added, if it's a deliberate act, you could possibly do it. Closest to the situation itself, Chernobyl scientists who worked on confinement plans at the site told new scientists on February 22nd that monitoring work would continue and that all safety systems at the plant are working well, but that scientific data processing has been partially suspended. In terms of the wider Russian invasion of Ukraine, NBC News reports that Chernobyl is most likely valuable because of its location, sitting on one of the most direct routes to the Ukrainian capital, Kiev, as Russian troops look to push through the country. Chernobyl also sits as a powerful symbol for the decline of the Soviet Union, with the disaster widely being seen as helping to lead to its ultimate collapse. Russian President Vladimir Putin has described the fall of the Soviet Union as the biggest geopolitical catastrophe of the century and is seen as keen to revive Russia's Soviet status on the world stage. Of course, the inherent dangers surrounding nuclear material within a conflict may also be in mind. Evelyn Farkas explains to NBC that even if Putin has no interest in the decommissioned plant itself, Russia would likely want to secure the facility, especially with the potential for a long-term fight with the Ukrainian insurgents if Russia continues to occupy the country. They certainly don't want loose nuclear material floating around, she said. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.